Hi, welcome back. So, I did find out a careless mistake. Oops. Yes, where's the careless mistake? Um, it's right over here. Here, up to here, that everything's okay. But from here onwards, I actually forgot to multiply beta cube in. This became, this is supposed to be beta cube, alright? This is supposed to be beta cube. So let's change that into beta cube. The second fraction is supposed to be beta cube. And uh, this uh, will become, everything will be increased by square. Because uh, beta times beta square, we are trying to multiply beta square into this whole thing. Beta times beta square is beta cube. So all of this ought to be multiplied by beta square. So let's uh, take a look at the, the second second uh, uh, second one. So uh, beta becomes beta cube. Beta square becomes beta 4. Beta 4 becomes beta 6. So 3, 4 and 6 are the powers of beta. The limited powers, not unlimited power, if you get the, the reference. Alright, okay. Beta cube, beta 4, beta 6. And let's uh, Wolfram it, alright? Let's Wolfram. Okay. So this to the cube, this to the fourth, this to the sixth. Let's see what's our... So we have a 3 over 140 for the second integral. Okay, 3 over 140. So the first one is correct. So, uh, let, so let's put the intermediate step over here. Okay, so the first integral is actually 1 over 10. The second integral will be 3 over 140. 3 over 140. So 3 over 140, that is equal... Was it 3 over 140? Yeah, it is. We're going to have a 120. Oh, right. Fraction. So 3 over 140 times half. So that's 3 over 280. So let's put 3 over 280 here. 280. So that's the Keller's mistake I made. Pardon me. But, uh, well, I can't make, I can't avoid every single mistake while I'm like doing this live. But I am doing this live, so yeah, go figure. Okay. Now, um, with this, there are two ways of approaching. You have the approximate way, which is what uh, the reference was doing. So let me put in the back the squares. And put the square right here. Uh, this is to the fourth. This is to the cube. That's fine. Or maybe I'll leave it here. Should I? No. Yeah. Okay, I'll I'll just leave it. Okay. So that's uh that's what we are doing. I just multiplied the delta t back in. All right. Uh we have this sort of a situation going on. All right. I'm I could leave it. Okay, wh whatever. Uh, we have this sort of situation going on. Um, so the key key in the approximate method, in approximate method, okay, we consider the ratio, the ratio uh, delta t over delta p. All right. So this is the approximate method. We consider the ratio delta p over delta t. Okay. So if delta t over delta p is uh, greater than one, okay. So if 
delta t over delta b greater than 1 it means that uh, likely we'll, we can just uh, ignore this this thing and we'll say much much greater than 1 we can ignore first term otherwise we can ignore uh, if if this is less than 1 if this is much less than 1 we can ignore the second term we can ignore the second term so let, let's uh, put this out clearly so I'm gonna put this out here delta p over del delta t over delta p greater than 1 so we will ignore the first term and it will be something like that then the other way around we will ignore the second term be something like that <coughs> excuse me this is one way of doing it okay one way of doing it to simplify your calculations and make life a little bit easier okay so now we, we have this kind of a uh, setup what's next okay we want to evaluate del theta del y at zero y equals to zero where's del theta del y okay del theta del y is here i mean uh theta is over here pardon me theta over y uh, theta is here theta so theta is this theta equals to all of this so let's differentiate all of this with respect to y okay let's, let's differentiate this fraction partial uh, partial y and let's delete all of this out okay so what we get the first one uh, we just get 1 over delta t second one we get 3y squared so 3y squared over delta t cubed that's all okay so now set y equals to 0 we will get del theta del y is just uh, del theta del y is equals to fraction 3 over 2 delta t that's all substitute back in So we will just uh, substitute this this whole thing, okay? And this one will be evaluated at y equals zero. Okay, so I just substitute this back in wholesale. Copy and paste. One here and one here. There we go. So um, yeah, let's let's uh, carry on. Okay, so now now uh, we have little bit of a dilemma. Uh, okay, we, we have this this very funny looking thing over here. Okay, it's a very funny looking ratio over here. Uh, we can actually you make use. That's one way of doing this is to make use of the known uh, boundary layer thickness so you take this delta p you substitute this as a function of x okay substitute this as a function of x back here and you kind of keep your fingers crossed that that works 
Cause I mean, uh, it technically should, and you will get a, uh, you will get some uh, differential equation, uh, in the form of. Uh, okay. Uh, let's see. Yeah. So there are, there are two ways of doing it. We can either just substitute, uh, this indirectly, our delta p indirectly, and then you just hope for the best. Okay, or, or you can try a little smarter method which is used inside the, the references I gave you from NAPTEL, M-P-T-E-L. Um, but let me, uh, yeah, I, I'm going to try the, the uh, brute force method and I just want to see how it works. So I'm looking for this uh, solution. Okay, uh, note from uh, momentum integral equation. Okay, delta p equals to x fraction 4.64 square root r e x. Okay, so so that's what I'm gonna do. Just gonna substitute this in. Okay, and the reason we we want to uh, have it greater or less than one greater or less than 1 is just to make the analytical solution a little bit easier. If you left these two terms together, it will be quite quite the nightmare to try and solve all of this. Okay, I can guarantee that. Okay, so let's let's just do that. Fraction 4.64. Okay, so 4.64 over Rex. What's Re? Re is u uh, infinity times x over nu. So I need to do the other way around. Okay, what, what do we have in front? Um, we have, uh, so, new infinity x over new. So new will be on top, x over x will be on top, and new infinity will be at the bottom. Okay, so that's, that's uh, Rex for you. Okay, shots. Why why did I have that? So four point six four should not be there. Yeah. This this is better. No need for fractions and there you go. So this is how our momentum layer thickness changes with X. Alright. Okay, so um, we'll just try the the case where um, momentum layer uh, delta t over delta p much less than one. Try substituting in latter case. Okay, what's the latter case? It is this case. So I'll have this over here and uh, substitute this in. So I'm going to paste it twice. I'm going to substitute in this in. Uh, okay, I'm going to substitute this in straight away to the bottom. So that we get some sort of a root x kind of a thing going on. So let's bring the 3 over 20 and 4.64 out. Just to uh, make life easier for ourselves. We don't want to deal with the extra things here. Times 4.64. Alright, so let's get this out of the way. And now we, are sh we should be ready to start. Oh, one more thing. I still need to get uh, the new u infinity, all of this, I need to get this up. Okay, so this will go on top. So u infinity will be to the power of 1.5. And I have a square root new over there. Okay, so fraction 1 over square root new. Fraction 1 over square root new. Alright, so I'll put I'll lump these terms together. 
I'll deal with the mess later. Okay. And at the bottom, there should be nothing except for a square root x. Okay. Ooh, that's ugly. There you go. Let's see how much time I have left remaining. Okay, about five minutes. Okay. Alright, so uh, more or less we have this. So we'll need to use a quotient rule here. Let's, let's use quotient rule. Okay. Uh, using quotient rule. So this will be, okay, what? The bottom square will just be x. Okay, so the top. Okay, bottom constant. Differentiate the top. So delta t. Uh, what? D, delta t, delta x. Okay, I can't remember what the quotient rule is. Let's let's uh, take a look. Quotient rule. Okay, so. Okay, th this is the the most. Uh, uh, okay, let, let's see. Oh no no, I don't want to look at this. No, I just need the rule. Give me the rule. Okay. Yeah, this is better. So bottom constant differentiate top minus top constant differentiate bottom. Okay. So that that's what the uh, quotient rule is. Just need a needed a refresher. So bottom constant differentiate top minus top constant, which is uh, delta t squared. Differentiate bottom, which is uh, oh boy, <laughs> uh, you differentiate the bottom, which is uh, you bring the zero point five down. Okay, one over square root x. All right. Oh boy, there we go. Quotient rule is finished. And there we have it. Uh, hopefully this this uh, okay. Substituting this back, we'll just get this. Uh, oh, I don't know. I don't want to cut that. Let's see if it turns out right. You have an extra bucket there as usual. Okay. Yeah. So that's that's one. Now let's uh let's just uh consolidate some terms. Ooh. So, so this part will have x at the bottom. Now let me remove the fraction. So in this part we'll have x to the power of Zero point five, no. Okay, fraction one over square root x. Okay. Okay, so now for sure differentiating this is gonna be a little bit challenging. 
or at least uh, integrating this. So we'll need to put this in the form of a palatable PDE or ODE because this is already in ODE form. Okay, so this is in ODE form. Uh, of course, this. Ooh, yeah, this itself can be reduced to uh, uh, yeah, this is already a uh PDE. Is it PDE? No, it's not PDE. It's an ODE. Sorry. So we'll divide. We can actually uh divide throughout by uh x square root of x. Okay. And before I continue, I just want to let you know, yes, uh, I think there was, I mistyped this thing. This should not be a delta at the bottom, there should be a D. Oh. Alright. Okay, so I mean this this should be an equation that it's almost you you can kind of solve it already. Uh, yeah, you, you you should be able to solve this equation more or less. Okay, so um, and you can re kind of recombine some terms here to like form your delta p's again. Though don't know whether that's uh that's desired or necessary. Okay, maybe maybe we'll do it after that. But you can see, uh, we actually, we can actually combine this delta t and this uh, d delta t delta x into a second order derivative. Okay, um, and of course you combine combine with this even, and combine with this delta t on the other side. You can make it a. Uh, okay, never mind. Let 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 me just finish what I'm trying to trying to do. Okay, I'll just multiply throughout by delta. T t so this will become delta t squared and delta t here will be gone okay and we're almost there i think we're almost there i am hoping for dear life <laughs> no just kidding no no i'm not hoping for dear life but uh i'm just hoping we are there Okay, so this this is almost almost it already. Cause you can see, you can see this is actually uh, you can almost form a first order ODE. Okay, because uh, the okay fraction d delta t cube dx equals to three delta t squared. Okay, then we have a fraction d delta t underscore t, excuse me, dx. Alright, so that's that's what the next step is probably going to be. Ah, okay, so I'm going to move this and then we'll have a one third over here. And why am I doing this? Uh, it will convert this this very complicated differential equation into a like a first order ODE, linear ODE. Okay. Okay. Substitute back, and looks like we have some light towards the end of the tunnel. Okay, something that's actually solvable. Now replace out this bit with this. Then you have a first order linear ODE in a, a first order ODE in in what delta t cube delta t cube and this this is actually why you want to separate it out into like the the two cases so to speak because uh, if not solving this will be very very difficult okay so so uh let's see you see you have this uh or ODE in delta t cube, so we'll probably need to uh, start shifting around some terms and all of that to actually make life easier for ourselves. Other than that, uh, yeah, we're pretty good. Okay, 
so I'll just stop for now. I will catch you guys again. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to solve this thing. <laughs> okay, see you.